Hello and welcome back to Let's Play True to Grad with me, Bring It On. So last episode, I actually sold my bomb gun deck to the old man. It looks just like a cassette tape. Now I want to do that Grandmaster quest, so I will keep that on hand. All right, let's go talk to this guy that's all the way over here to the east. A crooked man with an unkept beard paces it, a tight, nervous circuit, throwing furtive glances at the city gate, whispering grimly to himself. How should I act? Why go curse me beard? How do I find the lad? Uh, hey there, man. While somewhere deep in his thoughts, the man blinks hard twice and finally notices you. And a hello to you too. Mighty sorry. I was just daydreaming about a certain dilemma. You want anything or what? Well, I'd love to know what you're just mumbling about just now. Uh, I sell salted nuts on the highway. Not the best business a man can tangle with, but it pays. One time this young fellow bought all Omi nuts and acted all friendly like. We sat on a log near the road and chatted the day away. He told me he was an investigative journalist on his way to make an article about Summit in yonder city. I continue listening patiently. Tell me his mom in Son Sigrad Sig. Around that darn article was the only job he's got. They told him in the office he had to interview a bunch of folks here in Trudegrad, or else there's going to be no pay. And get this, the poor slob told me he never did an interview before. Anyway, his strong morals, his youthful inexperience, his inner conflict, and things reminded me of myself back in the day. We had a good long talk. When night came, he hurried into the city. But then I noticed that he dropped his notebook on the way. He probably fell out of his pack because he was hoisting himself up to leave. Man takes out a yellow old spiral notebook, a few sheets of which are covered in handwriting. Looky here. Numbers, names, something important for his interviews, I bet. Now I come here every day hoping to meet him again and give him back his papers. I even ditched my household chores for this. But he, never, but he never comes outside the gates. Now why don't you look for him in the city? How should I put this? I have this agreement with Trudegrad's polis. As long as I don't go near the city gates, they don't open fire. It's been a while since we struck this deal. I don't really want to check whether it's still in force. Uh, maybe I could help you get this notebook to its rightful owner. New friend gasps with relief and flashes his crooked teeth in a wide grin. Listen here, that's just what I was thinking right this second. I can't go into the city, but you sure can. Please, find the kid and give him his give him the notebook. I begs of you. My cow isn't milked, my pigs ain't slaughtered, my house is all dusty. I need to get back home. Oh, no problem, pal. Give me the notebook. Where should I look for this reporter friend of yours? He said he was going to M Mikulich's, Mikulich's tavern to write about the city's revolutionary movement, as well about as well as about his main assignment. Smart kid. Help me out. Here. You're helping me out big time here, buddy. I can finally get me things in order. Just don't forget about the poor feller. Give him the notebook and tell him old Piker says hi. All right? Sure. I'll do my best. No, wait, I have questions. Oh, he misses his pigs. Alright, well. That's alright. I don't know how insightful talking to him would have been anyway. So, uh, uh, of unspeakable cults. In this pamphlet, an unknown author shares his rather harsh views on cults and sex, which in his opinion, flooded true to grad. To whom it may concern, save from the atomic blaze by the grace of merciful fate and the might of the Soviet weaponry, true to grad lives on, and gloriously so. Our fair, city, our fair city is now a provincial Babylon that challenges the sky itself by growing not in girth, but in height, with shiny new structures and districts built atop the cold, tin-plated roofs of its brutalist apartment buildings. The hidden behind its walls, fortified with sand and steel, protected by its mighty guardians, and mostly safe from the yearly raging river floods that came with the distant bombs, Trudegrad has survived what was thought to be the end days. But in its growth and strength, 
Budigrad grew forgetful of the terrible ailment caused by its own prosperity. It forgot about the rapidly spreading cannibalistic mold, which originated in the barren and hostile northern lands, and quickly contaminated the city's poorest and dampest corners. There's no need to lie to ourselves. We've all heard the furtive whispers of those unfortunates, who yet live on the smoggy ground level of our glorious uh, city of spires. The whispers that tell of loathsome flats occupied by whole packs of the watery-eyed, disturbingly pale mongrel migrants from the execrable north. Rumors of the ungodly, heretical rituals performed when certain dim stars rise, and their unclean, disease-written kitchens and stairwells, gifted to them out of the pity by our vacuous city authorities. How naive our officials were when they decided to let these ragged, uneducated brutes into our midst. Did they not know their beliefs and traditions would follow with them? Now true to gratis home and hearth, to all manner of vile heresy, from the secretive lore's love slaves of Christopas, of the many-handed giant, whose slimy offerings make even the most pious curse the name of the Lord, the unholy witnesses of the death demon Sa uh, Sathagwa, the unspeakable followers of the black goat of the woods, an abominable, abominable turning tree of flesh that births monstrosities under the cold moonlight. Stay vigilant, fellow true to guardians, for the enemy is among us, spreading its culture and lusting for our pure blood to overflow its decrepit altars. A concerned citizen. And some canned meat. Zachariah the Herbalist. There she is. There's a small hunchback lady of about 60. At the same time, she's noticing you, her uninvited guest. The longer her gaze travels over you, the more disappointed she looks. Finally, she says, The giant withered one appears before the amazing Zachariah. Behold, people of the world, look upon this withered chunk of dry biscuit, if you can bear it. How ugly, weak, and st stultifyingly stupid he is. But fear not, Mr. Biscuit. I will heal you. Now heal myself. From what you ask, from the trauma of resting my tender eyes upon your dumb face. How am I dry? I'm neither dry nry nor withered. At least I don't think I am. The lady cackles hysterically and mocks you in reply. Blah blah, I'm not dry, nor am I withered. Are you an Egyptian dry biscuit perchance? Because it looks like you're in denial. Ha! Huh. <laughs> anyway, tell what you need and then we'll discuss the treatment. Okay then, I have a few questions for you. Elkhorn rolls her eyes and waits for your, uh, your questions. Tell me about yourself. When I was still young, there was a rumor that the local branch of the Gorobobus cult was planning to sacrifice a baby boy during the summer solstice. It would be a blood ritual of the most extreme cruelty, with nipple twisting and other horrific tortures. I, yet an idealistic lass, promised myself I'd save that child no matter what. In the dark of the night, I snuck through their camp to the main altar. There I whacked the guard in the head with a tree branch, snatched the boy, and fled through the dark woods, heart pounding. I was that baby boy, and I was my own savior, until I turned into a chicken. Huh? What? Your brain just melted a little bit, am I right? Had some difficulty sorting reality from fantasy for a mo. That's to be expected, because you just survived a psychic attack. I always use it on people who ask stupid questions. You're some kind of witch, huh? I know the secrets of herbs and I speak to Bracken. I seen Tomas and Mushroom. I help the sick and strengthen weaklings like yourself with my bruise. That is who I am. Uh, what can you tell me about Trudegrad? The city is stronger than some of my regulars' constipation. Nothing short of a miracle, like a meteor strike, I could level a fortress like this. Haha, if that's ever gonna happen. Or as if that's ever gonna happen. Have you heard any good gossip? Once when I was sitting down for lunch at the hotel, I wriggled my butt a bit to get more comfortable. And that darn chair started talking to me. 
begging for my help. Or was it the chair or the spirit of the chair calling out to me? Such are the questions of life. Alright, change the subject. Now let's talk about that treatment you're offering. The lips briefly perk up with a little smile. She asks with faint and disinterest. First of all, do you have the money, feeble one? 500 rubles. Do not lie to me or you face three unlucky situations in the near future. Now let's see how I do. What then? Then you get some good old holy stick medicine. Yep, yep. And what is this miracle medicine cure, you might ask? Why, well, you cursedly tiny and atrophied muscles, of course. Oh, how pitiful they are. So feeble and flabby. Phooey. Are you blind, lady? I'm like a modern day Hercules. He flexes one iron hard bicep for the old lady. It bulges out so huge and so fast, it must bobs her on the nose. The old woman accepts defeat with a scowl. Yes, I get it. Don't soil your pantaloons with all that flexing. So I mistook you for a weakling. My third eye needs a corrective lens is all. But however swole you may be, the, ten the tendons in your body are all withered and slack. Oh, how clumsy you are. So clumsy I'm ashamed to even know you. I'm pretty agile, actually. Look at me go. You empty your pockets and start juggling all your little knick-knacks while standing on one leg like a crane. The old lady has to struggle to conceal her awe. Oh wow. Look at you prove it what an, an honest granny wrong. Too bad no one would ever watch you perform because of your lukewarm dishwater personality. Let's face it, you're as interesting and unique as a doorknob in a doorknob factory. But don't you worry, I can fix you right up, Biscuit. Madam, my personality is as scintillating as your beauty. A broad smile creases Zachariah's features, right up until she realizes you've proved her wrong, at which point it collapses into a annoyed scowl. Okay, fine. You proved me wrong on every occasion. You're still a biscuit, but not a dry one. I'll give you that. I suppose you don't need any of my medicines. But, maybe I need something from you. So I wonder if that's dependent on what your highest skills are. Because it's weird that it was all of my skills that are currently sitting at 11. Strength, dexterity, and personality. Uh, uh, Dazzle me, Zachariah. I'll give you 500 rubles for a lock of your hair and a clipping of thumbnail. And use it to brew my new self-improvement movement potion. This offer includes my solemn promise not to use your keratin to curse you for not buying anything. I won't even stuff a doll with it and jab it with needles again and again and again to cause you terrible suffering. Tee hee hee. What do you say? Yeah, it's a deal. Take whatever you need. Not only herbalist trims your nails for you. Here's a sizable hair... Sorry, sizable hank of hair in the back of your head. She then slips her potion ingredients into a pocket of her dress and hands you a stack of ancient, tattered, but still usable bills. Tee hee hee. I'll trip on my money when I sell these potions, little biscuit. Now go. Help this withered, wrinkly old crone even if you didn't buy a single thing. Yeah, have a good one. Got some decent experience and decent paycheck. Alright, we'll do all the houses before we go to the market proper. Oops, looked on the wrong thing there. Alright, so the cassette tape is more orange than I remember it being. I swear the cassette tape was red and white. So I keep trying to sell my Bahama Gun deck because it looks like a cassette tape to me. A lot of people walking around. Oh yeah, uh, someone told me that I... Th may have missed 
I'll be back in the hotel. So I'm gonna run back and check that real fast. Supposedly there was a uh, container in the room all the way to the east. That I may have overlooked. I didn't have the book in it that I was looking for, but that's okay. He's just a passerby. A lot of people to talk to. Alright, who are you? You know what, I might trade for cigarettes, because those are cheaper to carry, or lighter to carry around, and uh, worth a decent amount of money as well. An aging woman with a cigarette in her teeth is warming her hands before a flaming barrel. I am the passers-by with a predatory gaze. Everyone who catches her attention carefully averts their eyes and hastens on their way. Well, well, well. Look at the little mice go. Freaking goody two-shoes prudes. When you're drunk, you'll come crawling around to make sweet love to Lady Daisy. When you're sober, you suddenly go blind. A woman sucks on a cigarette and wheezes out a cloud of dark gray smoke. Looking around in a bored way, sees you're the only person who dares to go near her. Howdy ho, sailor. Looking for some hot loving? Uh, not gonna lie. I'm not. Too bad. Now you know where to find someone who's always ready, always willing. I can ask you some questions, though. What a boring young man you are. Ah, so be it. What did you want to ask? Is it hard, working out here in the cold? It's not easy for anyone. That pimp of mine, ugh. Sorry, Daisy. You're only fit for field work. You get your fat butt to the outskirts to start working it. Uh, do you have a lot of clients? The woman frowns in concentration and starts mumbling under her breath, as if calculating something. Hmm. There's plenty. In the outskirts and in places like the scrap quarter, there's tons of thugs of all kinds. These guys don't have much money, but whatever they do have, they spend on entertainment. What can you tell me about the city? It's a nice fat city. Many foreign travelers, many traders, mercenaries, Prime clientele with full pockets. Uh, plenty of weirdos and pervs out there, too. But uh, we've had those even before the war. Any interesting rumors you can share? There's lots of talk about arenas in the city, where animals fight and people place big bets on the outcome. If I had the time to actually find one of these places, I'd put 50 rubles down in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Yep. I need, to I need to check this out as soon as I get the chance. Alright. That's it for her. So this guy back here with his dog. Let's go talk to him next. Unless he's on the edge of the map, which is perfect. So I want to go back here and look for buried treasure anyway. Up, oh, see? See? The Hedgehog Amulet. This amulet depicts a blue hedgehog head made from clay. When you take it in your hands, you feel like the wind is blowing in your face as if you're running somewhere. Plus two to dexterity. It requires less than a three intellect. And a farewell letter. My symptoms cannot lie. My prophetic visions became too powerful in this moonless night. Coincidence or destiny? On my, pro my, my prophetic gift... It makes my head shake and pulse in terrible pain. It whispers inside my mind, using different voices, including those of my lovers. It turns my words into naive babbling. It announces, the merge is coming soon. 
For the longest time I have seen the distortions, the pulsating light on the horizon each dusk as the Hesperus star rises following the dying of the sun. At first I did not know what it meant, but now I understand. The light is calling me from a parallel universe which took pity on our terribly wounded Earth. In that world, which is hidden from our eyes by a shining veil of light, there is no war. There, people resolve their problems peacefully, disarmed and went their own ways. There, Papa Robert and our dog Pet Petia lived on. There, my mom v Varvara bakes pies in Snow White. Cinderella, Baba Yaga, and others from my favorite Russian and Western cartoons live on. Not in fiction, but in reality. Can you imagine it? Unless it exists in some alternate dimension where World War III never happened, it will be there. The gals are boyfriend free. Everyone kisses everyone on the mouth, on the lips. You have a hippo on your head. What square of recycled orange semen? What? Oh my, it happened again. The ringing of the prophecy left my brain numb. I could barely keep my balance. The knowledge wants to burst from my head. My skull was too tight for it. Reality is fading. When they call the dimensional merge is real. There, by the blue pine trees, the Esper star shines, the veil calls to me. I'll leave all that I own here. When the worlds merge, I'll have access to tons of savings and new things. Maybe I'll even get a pair of jeans. Naked, tortured, but filled to the brim with hope. I'm walking to the forest now. What is this? A violent mutant spider sharpening its mandibles on a tree stump? Or my father, alive and well in the other dimension, ringing the bell of awakening. I'm hitting your call. Your prophetic call. Here I go. That was a weird read. What's done is done. Yeah, so you can't actually put your stats above 11. There's no reason to even equip this. I don't hold on to it. That's why you always check all the uh, all the corners. I should probably run down this way at some point. I might do that off camera. If I can't find it. Or find anything. Alright, let's talk to this man. I just have to trade for. I don't really care much for alcohol in this game, so I'm gonna trade what I can. trade. A man of short stature is nervously jumping in place, every so often glancing at a shaggy dog sitting nearby, happily wagging its tail. The man is so consumed by this activity, he doesn't see you approach. Negligent hound, good for nothing, not even for supper. I might just cook, your, cook you for supper for scolding man's best friend that way. Man flinches in surprise and curses in unfamiliar language. Very funny, Lao Wai. The animal is such a friend. Why will it not obey me? Its rightful master I paid a good sum of money to purchase it. When I say stay, it walks. When I say follow, the beast stays. I do not know what to do. Well, it's a miserable situation you've gotten yourself into. But enough about that. I want to chat. Now, let us talk, Lao Wai. Uh, what's your name? I'm Zikao. Zichao? What may I call you? I'm glad to make your acquaintance. My name is... Man takes a step closer and bends forward from the waist to get a better... to better hear your answer. <laughs> the Macaroni Master. Uh, Donnie. Nice to know your name, Donnie. May bring you good fortune in, fi in the future. But what do you do? Or for the Guangzhou Caravan Conglomerate, in the rank of Noble Entrepreneur. 
This means I am trusted enough to work the caravan without constant supervision by a superior. However, I have nothing to sell right now. I'm waiting for a caravan to take me back to our base in far away Neo Khabarovsk. Oh, what can you tell me about Trudegrad? It is a big, powerful city. Not as big and powerful as Shanghai or New Beijing. Let's be real. But still. Uh, share some rumors with me. You see that red star? In the north it is called Sigir, Wolf Star or Wormwood. In the west it is called Chigir, Lucifer, or the Hesperus Star. However, we Guangzhou Caravaneers are simple people, so we call it the unblinking and ever-watchful ruby eye of the wealthy cosmic dragon who we beg to send desperate buyers with sizable bags of gold our way. Easy to remember and descriptive. Right, let's change the subject. If I remember, you're disappointed with your disobedient dog. I can train it. The man gives you a skeptical look. Hmm. I guess you could give it a try. His name is Haishin. Sea cucumber in your tongue. Perhaps you'll succeed where I failed. If you do not, you have my, pen you have my permission to put it down. I yeah, hope it won't come to that. Stay here. A young male Alsatian tosses his head and looks at you with a silly expression on his muzzle. Wolf. Well, oh, Haitian, what do you think about a little workout? The dog goes cross-eyed and gives a little whimper. We'll start with simple commands. Sit. Lie down. The dog stares at you blankly. What's the best approach for teaching him the basic commands? Well, try survival. Use your knowledge of pack animal behavior and nonverbal communication. You pretend to be a dog and try to demonstrate what sit means. The dog watches your pathetic antics, sticking out your butt with a stupid grimace on your face, and looks concerned. Alright, we'll use strength. Now lie down, I tell you. Sit. Assert your dominance. The terrified animal crouches trembling at your feet. Now he knows who the alpha is. I should obey all your commands at once. Sitting, lying down, standing again, and rolling over. Alright, uh, what next? The dog goes cross-eyed and gives a little whimper. You should bark at strangers or anyone the slightest bit unusual. Bite people who hurt your master. Bring the dog to his master and ask him to repeat the command. Attack, until the animal realizes he's supposed to attack you. How are you going to pull this off? Attack me. What are you scared? What are you, scared? Do it, sissy. Try to provoke the dog, but the poor animal is terrified of you. The low whine, he hides behind his master and won't respond to any commands. The stone underneath his furry body quickly turns yellow. And I feel bad. I use your knowledge of animal instincts to trigger Haishin's aggression. You crawl squealing on all fours in front of the dog, roll over in the snow, bending helplessness. It doesn't respond except to slowly wag his tail. Okay. Uh, your master doesn't want you to run away. Stay by his side unless he tells you otherwise. Unleash the dog and he happily runs away. You obviously need to teach the animal to stay by his master's side. Uh, run after the dog and drive him to his master to make him understand what he's supposed to do. You tirelessly pursue the dog, eventually forcing him back to his master, who strokes him before letting him go again. You repeat the training until Haitian performs every time. Great, let's move on to the next command. Well, we did two of them. We can't... ...succeed in that one. Do I have a way to boost my survival? I don't think that I do. I mean, that might be enough. Nope, still not enough. I don't have any other way to boost survival, I don't think. <laughs> Seems like this short man is still having dog troubles. Greetings, Lao Wai. You wanted something? Well, let's talk about the results of Heisen's trading. We bring good news, Lao Wai. Alright, so I can't complete the quest even partially. Okay, well it should be in our quest log, right? Hmm. 
It sucks because I'm, I'm succeeding at that strength check, but it's uh, the success that's keeping us keeping us back, or holding us back. I don't care if I walk in. Each one of these is worth one ruble, I believe, so it's definitely worth picking up this early on. We're hurting for money. Pretty sure that's my car. Or just the exact same model. The car you get in the uh, the base campaign. So another minefield over here. Away to the city. Okay, then I'm gonna call the episode here. The next one we'll start speaking to more people. Uh, Talk to this guy here, probably go to the market, speak to all the merchants. Usually merchants, I uh, just ask them the four questions, they don't have anything extra to do, but uh, we'll see. This is how it was in the uh, base game. I don't remember very many merchants having quests. Uh, there's one you had to pass a personality check for. This looks like that might be a quest right there. No telling about that guy. Yeah, I feel like this is our car. Maybe we drove it here, we just don't need to use it to, tra uh, to travel around Tritograd. I don't know, we'll see. Either way, gonna call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.